<laughs> well, howdy, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to another edition of That's Railroad, where we bring the railroad to you. <laughs> we love doing it, too. Today, we're going to have, uh, we're going to talk about concrete versus wood ties. And this is a big topic. And uh, probably one of the biggest questions that I've gotten for all the uh, tens of thousands of comments for all the videos is, uh, why don't you guys use your concrete ties? So we're going to, I made a short video uh, some time ago, it was incorporated in part of like my primer uh, video, and uh, I don't think a whole lot of people watch that. So uh, why, why we don't use concrete ties, and I'm going to tell you uh, about um, some of the studies they've done also in this video on concrete ties. Concrete ties have been around for a long time. Actually, back around the mid-1980s, uh, we tried concrete ties here, okay? And it uh, didn't work. They were, they were old. They, they had, uh, let me turn it around here. We had back then, we're here at our turnout. They do make concrete ties for turnouts. And those ties can be up to 12 inches thick. Remember that in the future here when I talk to you. Uh, but the concrete ties that we had back then, they had a concrete block here that went out. And then there was an angle iron, a metal angle iron over to this block on this side. All right. And... Uh, tried that up there where they load the trains <laughs> and uh, worked pretty good they were heavy I actually helped put them in way back then and uh, first derailment car wheel came off went down here and sheared every one of those angle irons off angle bars off angle irons whatever you want to call it between there so that was the end of our concrete tie experiment <laughs> but uh, there's a couple other reasons why concrete wood ties are seven inches thick concrete ties there's all kinds of different uh profiles lb foster actually markets 28 different uh, profiles of concrete ties uh, obviously you don't want you don't need the same um strength for heavy haul railroad like we have as you would for transit and uh, now those concrete ties are anywhere from 8 to up to 10 inches thick one thing about concrete ties um, from way I'm my studies way I understand it concrete ties you've got to have a really good road bed uh, the older concrete ties, if they were in a spot like this, all we'd end up doing, they'd, they'd uh, this track moving up and down, all we'd end up doing, they'd crack right in the center. And we'd just replace tie after tie after tie. The newer, that was a long time ago that they had that. They've made a lot of advances in concrete tie technology with uh, pre-stressing the ties. And uh, you'll have to do a search on to find out how they pre-stress the ties uh, we're not going to cover that in this video also the concrete ties now for heavy haul are around uh, 10,000 psi concrete is what they use which has significantly helped in the cracking of the ties all right <laughs> but but for uh but concrete even a pre-stressed high psi tie this kind of stuff here is not good on that tie there's no flexibility at all on concrete ties the wood ties we have some flexibility and uh, wood ties seem now the concrete ties will last longer I know you know I've told you in that past video a good grade tie will last uh, 25 to 30 years in good ballast conditions and this kind of stuff it's half-life uh, concrete ties 
have a life expectancy of up to 50 years. So, you know, they would last longer as far as the wear on them. You know, mud's not going to affect the concrete. It's not going to rot the concrete. This mud's going to rot the ties. Uh, but again, that concrete roadbed is stiff. And you've got to have a really good, really good ballast on that roadbed to keep it. And uh, it does provide, concrete does provide a better track stability with good roadbed conditions. It uh, provides a better uh, holding power for your track alignment also than wood. So there's pros and there's cons with wood and concrete. And again, we're going to talk some more about uh, that here in a little bit. Um, 90, according to the Railway Tie Association, 93% of the ties in North America are wood. With the better advances in concrete ties, uh, seems like new construction uh, has been going to concrete. To mix and match them, have a concrete tie, wood tie, concrete, etc., etc., or even one uh, section of concrete and then go back to wood. It's not going to work for us. And here's why. Uh, these ties are seven inches thick. This is my uh, tamper. And when I tamp, these tools go down. All right. And once this top of this gets below the bottom of this tie, then it squeezes the ballast underneath the tie. So this is preset, and it's set with these limit switches. This bottom limit switch here controls. Once it gets to a certain depth, that limit switch trips and causes the squeeze cylinders to squeeze. Now, if I wanted to tamp a concrete tie that is thicker than the seven inches, I would have to go out here and reset this. I'd have to drop it down. So this work head would drop further on down. Now I've got four work heads. So I gotta crawl in there. And I gotta reset that one. And I gotta reset the one over there. And then reset the one on the work head over there. So it's 20 minutes of work just to tamp concrete ties. Then I go back to wood and we've got 16.8 miles of wood ties here. I, and I gotta reset them back up. So that's a considerable amount of work. And it's just not going to happen. I've got an old operating system on this tamper. If I had the uh, on the newer operating systems, the Jupiter 2s, they have a toggle on their computer screen. They can toggle between concrete and wood. So those are the two reasons why we don't have concrete here. And we live here in southwestern Pennsylvania. Uh, the three counties... Down here in the bottom corner, Green, Fayette, and Washington County. We have Cumberland Mine Railroad. We have Norfolk Southern, CSX, Wheeling and Lake Erie, uh, the Allegheny Valley Railroad, and also Southwest Pennsylvania Railroad. And nobody here uses concrete ties. <laughs> nobody here. Okay. Stay tuned because uh, we got a lot more to talk about. All righty. Oh, uh, here's one difference uh, between concrete and wood. Your uh, your wood ties, your your uh, new wood ties, they they weigh around 200 pounds, depending on the species of hardwood. Weigh up to, up to 200 pounds. Your concrete ties can weigh uh, up to 700 or a little bit over. The uh, tie spacing for concrete they can be put up to 30 inches on centers, where your uh, Wood ties have to be centered a lot closer. Now here's one difference that you get ballast. And I showed you in that last video how this, when the, he's laying here, this roadbed's full of, or crib's full of rock ballast. And that goes in there and creates resistance, a lot of resistance underneath and on both sides of the tie. That creates a lot of resistance with that crib being filled up. So that's what helps significantly to hold this wood tie in place in the track is that locking in of the ballast. Now with a concrete, 
you know that's not gonna that's not gonna happen that's uh like, imagine taking this stone and just running it over a piece of concrete there's absolutely no very little uh, resistance that's created by the ballast however due to the significant amount <laughs> you know if you have a 200 pound tie and you have a 700 pound tie you got 500 pounds of difference in that extra weight is what helps is what creates the resistance to hold that tie in place also uh, you know on concrete ties you have your ballast shoulder out here on the outside so that shoulder helps some too um, in, well I want to uh, add this in here one uh, huge huge advantage that uh, concrete ties have over wood is environmental uh, it seems to have a less of a carbon footprint in producing the uh, concrete ties than it does the wood but that's not the big one the, the, the big one is the end of life disposal uh, you know all our ties we send to a landfill and uh, that costs a lot of money okay um, and I, I really expect the way things are going here in the future that uh, these creosoted ties will no longer be allowed to be used by landscapers and such uh, but that's not here yet but I'm expecting it in the future so the concrete at the end of life is huge uh, you know you can take an old concrete tie and crush it up and use it as a base for a for a road so these have other than landscape ties have no use at all and uh, there's only so big of a market for the landscape ties so you know all our ties here I've told you in the past go uh, in dumpsters to landfills so that's a that's a big one another thing is too now I know uh, these you got to cut down a lot of trees to get a lot of ties and you know the, the trees are nature's cleansing one of nature's cleansing agents for the planet and uh, you know the more trees you cut down trees absorb the co2 and they produce oxygen and trees are just absolutely fantastic for the environment so you know, the more concrete ties you use, the less wood ties we'll have to use. And uh, that will, in itself, be a much greater benefit for the entire uh, planet, is to have more trees. <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, you know, we have wood ties here, and I'm a big proponent of wood ties, but I'm just telling you the facts. Uh, European countries use a lot of concrete. And it's understandable because... Uh, you know they don't have the natural resources like the 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 huge amounts of of trees that they can cut for uh this for for wood ties there's still a lot of wood ties used in europe i understand that but they're more and more and more they're going to concrete because they just don't have the uh available resources to make the wood plus i think and i'm kind of like assuming that the environmental restrictions are somewhat greater over there as far as uh, using creosote ties and uh, wood. All right, so uh, some of you guys can write in and uh, let me know your thoughts on that part. All right. Now here's one really, and I don't have any concrete ties here. I said there's none in this area. I don't know where where to where to go to find one to show it to you. I'll show you some pictures. Uh, I'm going to give you some dimensions on uh, one of the ties that we would use that LB Foster makes if we used concrete ties. So I'll give you that here in a little bit, so you'll be able to see. And there's different uh, fastening systems that they use for the different types of concrete ties. Um, one really really cool thing this this is really cool and i love this idea and lp foster is uh is doing it they're actually when they cast the concrete ties uh they're implanting a chip they're using rfid technology that chip in that concrete 
uh, tie. I know that's not concrete, but I'm just using that as an example. That chip that records the date of manufacture, uh, the, the, who manufactured it, where it was manufactured at, and that chip will last the life of the tie. Uh, they actually can go out and put that tie in 30 years from now, get down the track in a high rail truck, and read that chip in that tie and know how old that tie is. Now, isn't that pretty cool stuff? <laughs> oh, that is cool. All right. Uh, RFI radio frequency identification. Okay. Okay, I told you that uh, LB Foster makes different 28 different profiles. Uh, CXT is the North American concrete tie producer for LB Foster. And here are some of them. We're not going to show you every one of them, but uh, I'm going to pick one here and give you the dimensions. So they have uh, the mainline products. And in here, um, heavy haul profiles. And we're going to look at this one, the 200S-67. And then they have industrial and port profiles. They make uh, ties for concrete ties for uh, like gantry cranes and stuff in shipyards and stuff. All right. So we'll look at this one here. Show you the dimensions on that. There you go. That is a, uh, it's eight foot, six inches in length. And uh, that's typical of a wood tie. Here in the center, it's six and three quarter inches. Where the rail sets over, it's eight and 13 sixteenths of an inch. And the tie itself is 11 inches wide. It's 140. This is a set on a 1 and 40 cant, just like regular tie plates are. They have a little bit of a, a little bit of a slope to them. So they're set on a 1 and 40 cant. It's the same as the tie plates. And this particular tie is fastened with Eclipse, and it weighs 700 pounds. All right. <laughs> so... There you go. Let's uh, show you a picture there of concrete ties. This is on the LB Foster website. And in the track. Okay. We've got some more stuff we're going to go over here too. So don't go anywhere. Because we're not done yet. <laughs> All right. We're going to... Uh, this is a interview with Michael Frank, it's spelled F-R-A-N-K-E. I don't know if you pronounce it Frank or Frankie. We're going to call it Frank. So he's the uh, former vice president and chief engineer of the BNSF Railway. And I personally have the utmost respect for Burlington Northern Santa Fe Maintenance of Way Program. I think they're the finest out there of all the Class 1 railroads. Anyway, here's the big problem with concrete and uh, once in a while you have a derailment Michael says where just one wheel comes off the track and we've had that on our railroad many times and it drags for miles sometimes and we've had actually a car come off one wheel come off it was back in the trip the operator didn't know it when uh, you only get 38 cars on a trip like we do and two locomotives you have no clue unless you see dust coming up behind you or a car rolls over, that you have a single wheel off. And uh, we've had one drag for over eight miles one time. And uh, here's what Frank said. Frank said a dragging wheel, a single dragging wheel, can break concrete ties right in half. Now, can you imagine on our railroad, if we had concrete ties, and one wheel came off, and we had eight miles of track where all of the ties, or a good portion of the ties, were broken half. Uh, we're going to be shut down for months. Okay, whereas, Michael goes on, whereas the wooden tie is more resilient, and you'll get a mark, which is absolutely true. Um, just a wheel mark down the middle of the track, or on the edge of the tie. Um, depending on where the wheel comes off. But the tie itself is still intact. And 
We said that is absolutely true, and that's what happened on ours. Uh, the many derailments that we've had, single wheels, you know, you keep on going because the ties aren't just, uh, you, you just get it chipped in the ties. Okay, so that's the big, big drawback with concrete ties. I'm trying to hold this steady, I'm sorry. Uh, let's go on here and see a little bit more of what he says. Concrete ties do better on sharp curves. And that's because rails wear out on curves and have to be replaced. Duh. Which means reattaching the rail to the ties. And too much reattaching can ruin a wood tie. We call that spike kill a tie. Uh, driving a, a spike back. You can take a spike out, drive it in, uh, and then replace the rail. Take a spike out, drive it in. That's called spike kill killing a tie and he's absolutely correct about that so you don't get that with concrete ties so there you have another pro and another con for wood and concrete <laughs> but that that uh, would be a huge one for us if uh, if we had concrete ties and had a large number of them break in half from a single wheel derailment and we will have single wheel derailments again in the future we just don't know when, but we will have them. And there you go. All right. Okay, here's a uh, another factor that is involved is the return on investment uh, with concrete versus wood ties. And this is a, a pretty good article here written by Dr. Alan M. Zarembeski. Sorry if I mispronounced that. He's president of Zeta. Tech Associates, and this article appeared in Railway Track and Structures magazine. So I want to scroll down here, and we'll try to uh, find where I want to go here on this. I'm not going to read you the whole article. I will put a link in the description if you want to read this entire article, but I'm going to give you the uh, gist of it, the highlights. Nope, passed it up here. All right. Uh, you can't see, there's charts down below here, but you wouldn't be able to see them anyway because they're straight up and down instead of this way. But anyway, um, right here. Now, as uh, can be seen in his figure, again, you can't see the figure, the chart below. There's a negative return on investment for concrete tie track for curvatures up until five and one half degrees. Now, uh, below that, our our track, you know, we have 70 curves and uh, over two thirds of them are five and a half degrees or greater. So it's definitely a, uh, a thing that as far as that goes, would be of benefit for our high degree curves is the concrete. However, like I told you about with uh, what Mr. Frank said, and uh, we're going to read a little bit more here on this economic thing, the return on investment. Uh, okay, it goes on to say, beyond that value, the return on investment for concrete becomes positive. This indicates that for this base case, wood tie track is more economic until approximately five one half degrees, after which concrete tie track becomes economically viable. All right, uh, next we go to uh, this, where it says, the effect of varying annual tonnage in million gross tons, MGT, uh, for the base case. Analysis. The return for concrete tie track becomes positive, indicating, indicating a benefit in changing to concrete at an annual tonnage level of approximately 32 million gross tons. For track with less than 32 million gross tons of traffic, the concrete tie track return on investment is negative. Now, <laughs> only your class one railroads have that kind of traffic. Actually, I figured it out. I, some rough figures. Uh, we ran over 5 million ton of coal last year. I uh, figured out the train weight and the million gross tons. And uh, that adds, that's that's your, your, your tear plus the weight of your train. Uh, last year, uh, ballpark figure. We ran 6,415,331 million gross tons. So we don't even come close to what would be a positive return according to this 32 million gross ton. 
All right. Uh, now here's another thing. The effect of varying wood tie life. Um, the return on investment for concrete tie track becomes positive when wood tie life is less than 24 years. Okay. And I told you about the, the length uh, tie life that we had for wood. Uh, if wood tie life is greater than 24 years, uh, the concrete tie return on investment is negative. This is another reason why it is so critical for us to uh, crib ties and keep the mud out so that tie life is extended uh, on our track. But there you go. Uh, so all in all, you know, for our track, um, we're not going to see concrete because it just... Uh, there's, there's too many negative things involved with concrete for our particular track. Again, the Class 1 railroads uh, that have that kind of tonnage. And, uh, you know, concrete's great for, for them. And I'm not saying anything about any other railroad uh, or making decisions for them. I'm only saying what's going to happen on our railroad. And I've given you a lot of facts and figures and information in this video today. Uh on the differences between wood and concrete. It certainly is not comprehensive. There's a whole bunch more studies out there on the internet, and I can't talk for an hour on this video going over all the different studies that are out there, but I've given you the highlights, I think, and give you a pretty good idea of uh, the differences between wood and concrete, and uh, so there you are. All right, I think that's going to wrap it up for this video, and I... Uh, hope you uh hope you've enjoyed it hope it's been educational and um, hope you have a really good day there's the railway track and structures uh website a lot of cool stuff on it all right have a really good one thank you thank you thank you for watching